Welcome back to video two on lighting. What's going on everyone? In this video, video number two on lighting, we're gonna be talking about DMX and specifically how you DMX fixtures and how DMX work. Now this video is not gonna talk about how you actually program via Chave Show Express or the ADJ DMX Bridge. We're gonna be specifically talking about how DMX works, the tools you need to do DMX. Now the first part in actually DMXing lighting is having fixtures that are DMX compatible. By that I mean they have an XLR port that says DMX in and DMX out on the light. Like this right here, this is a DMX in, this is a DMX out on an ADJ mega hex par. Most movers, most pars, most DJ lights in general are DMX compatible, even the Chinese ones. And if you didn't know already, basically DMXing is controlling your lights, telling your lights what to do. What tells your lights what to do is some sort of DMX dongle, Chave Show Express, ADJ DMX Bridge. There are a lot of options out there for DMX control. And your phone, iPad, and or computer are normally the device that is actually writing the programs, the device that's actually sending the signals to the lights. All these boxes right here doing are taking that signal from that device and then outputting it in DMX format via the XLR connectors. Now before we dive too heavily into DMX, we need to talk about how you get your signal from this box to your light. There are a lot of options out there. A lot of lights nowadays have already wireless DMX built into them. ADA has their own Wi-Fi system, which is wireless DMX over 2.4 gigahertz or Wi-Fi. It's a Wi-Fi signal that they transmit the signal from the box, the DMX box sends this DMX signal to the light. And if the light is DMX compatible, like the ADJ Element Hexes that I have over there somewhere, they will receive that signal because they have wireless DMX built into it. Obviously, if you don't have very fancy and expensive lights like that that already have wireless DMX built into them, then you need to go the other route and that is either DMX cabling, so you run wired cables to all of your lights. So I would run a wired cable from my Show Express box, the output here, into the input on this light and then that light would now be DMX. Now there is a big downside to running cables and that is that all lights have to be chained from one to another and it takes a lot of cables. As I will show you on the rig behind me. Now on the rig back here, if I wanna actually DMX all of these lights, these four pars and the two movers via wire to the Chave Show Express box, I have to do it in chain. That means the output of this Show Express box will have to go from this to the first light, back down, up this to the mover, back down, up to that mover, another cable back down to that par, another cable up to that part. It has to be in a chain sequence, which if you can't tell, takes up a lot of cables and therefore takes up a lot of time. That's why a lot of people like myself have gone to wireless DMX receivers and transmitters. Now there are a lot of brands out there, but specifically the ones that I use and a lot of DJs out there use are donor wireless DMX transmitters and receivers. Mine specifically, these are battery powered receivers so I don't have to plug them into AC power. I can just plug these right into the light and I'm ready to go. This right here is the transmitter that plugs into the back of my Show Express box or to my ADJ DMX bridge and allows me to send signal to these receivers. Again, it does that over 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal. Another good point with wireless DMX is that you can still chain off of lights. So if I'm using wireless DMX to go to this par right here, I can still use a cable, plug a cable into here, and then run that DMX signal to another light. Meaning I don't have to have a dedicated receiver for every single one of my lights. I can just have three or five, and then any additional lights I have can be chained off of that if it's convenient. A good example of that is if you're running four of these PARs on a T-bar, four of these back to back to back really close together. You just run one receiver into the first light and then you just use cables to chain the rest of them because it's not really that hard to do because they're all really close together and you don't waste a lot of receivers, especially because these are a lot more expensive than cables. So now that we got the basics of how the communication flows and the hardware that you need to actually hook up your lights to be able to DMX, let's explain what DMX is and how it works. The simplest way to put it is that DMX is a lot of 
channel faders. Similar to an audio board like behind me, DMX is a bunch of digital faders. You have a bunch of these faders right here in the digital realm. Now that's not to say there are DMX controllers that are analog like this right here. You can go buy an analog lighting controller and use the standard faders to control your lights. But I'm gonna tell you right now, it is a pain in the ass. If you're gonna get into DMXing, go the digital route, otherwise you will hate DMXing. Most typical DMX software, such as Shave Show Express, such as AD, the ADJ DMX Bridge, such as Sound Switch, use 512 digital faders or DMX channels. And that is why if you go in the back of any light such as the ADJ Mega Hex part right here, you will find that on the DMX channel, you will have 512 numbers available to go to or DMX addresses. To better visualize these 512 channels, I'm gonna show you Chave Show Express because that allows you to visualize the 512 channels. As you can see on the screen right now, there are 512 little individual boxes on this screen. And as you guys can see right there, there are lights taking up certain numbers of channels across the board right there. And these are all the lights that I programmed into Chave Show Express. Each light, like the ADJ Mega Par beside me, takes up a certain number of channels to be able to run this light. Those channels do a variety of things. And like I said, I'm not necessarily showing you guys how the DMX in this video, I'm just showing you guys how DMX works for a better understanding. So if I click on one of these lights on the screen, like the ADJ Mega Hex Par right here, you will see all of the channels come up. This light is using eight different channels. Channel number one, red. Channel number two, green, blue, white, amber, UV, dimmer, shutter. Those are all the digital faders for that light. And if we go to the next tab here in Chave Show Express in the steps tab, we can click on the mega hex par over here and we can see all of those digital faders right there. So these are all the digital faders for that specific light. All right, so now with the rig in front of me, I'm gonna show you guys how we can actually activate those digital channel faders to control the light. So with our mega pars right here, the way you need to turn these on is one, your dimmer's gotta be up and your shutter's gotta be up. Your shutter is your strobe frequency and your dimmer obviously is how bright or dim the light is. Now we can raise the red fader to turn on the red, we can raise the green fader to turn on the green. We can do the same for the blue, the white, and as you can see right there, we can layer lights by applying different faders. And this is your shutter, so your shutter will do all kinds of strobe features if you l raise it to different volumes. So if you put it at like 240, as you can see right there, we are strobing and it is at around 219. Just different strobe patterns that you can do with the shutter. So obviously beside that, you got the master dimmer. Like I said, that's how you dim the lights from zero to 100 to make them brighter or less. You can also layer your lights a little bit. So if you want to add a little bit of red to this, you can apply just a little bit or a lot. So you have dimming capabilities in the individual colors themselves, as well as in the master dimmer. And then beside that, you have shutter. Again, that is your strobe feature. So if you get right about here, you will see strobing happening every so once in a while. You can do different levels of strobing with shutter. So if you have a Chinese light, or if you just wanna know how many channels of DMX your light's gonna take and what each individual channel does, go to your user manual, or Google your user manual for your specific light. Inside of each one of your lights, you will find pages that'll tell you the DMX channel modes that it has. So right here is the user manual for the ADJ Element Hex, and we can run the ADJ Element Hex in a six channel mode, a seven channel mode, an eight channel mode, a 11 channel mode, a 12 channel mode, and inside the book, it'll tell you what all of those faders do in that channel mode. This is a good point to talk about why certain lights have different channel modes. Like this one has a six channel, a seven channel, an eight channel, a 12 channel, 11 channel, and basically what that is is the amount of control you're gonna have over that light in six channel mode you're just gonna have red green blue white amber and UV control from zero to a hundred percent you don't have any master dimmer you don't have any shutter if you go to seven channel mode you gain that master dimmer so you can have a little bit more control and then in eight channel mode you gain that shutter so that way you can strobe the light now specifically with the ADJ element hex and with the ADJ mega hex 
PARs because they have the same DMX programming, you can go all the way up to a 12 channel mode. Now this is completely not necessary for DMXing your lights. It's actually kind of cluttered and not useful at all. All of the channels for this light past your red, green, blue, amber, white, all those individual colors, and then your master dimmer and your strobe, they are program channels. So channel nine is gonna give you a program selector so you can select different macro modes, you can put it in sound active mode, Channel 10 is a more macros and pre-programmed color changes. There's even more sound active ones and channel, what is channel 12? They're completely pointless. Basically 9, 10, 11, and 12, these are all channels to activate the built-in programs in that specific light. Which again, if you are DMXing and you want to make the lights do what you want it to do, they're completely not necessary. So like I said, you have 512 channels and like we talked about, you can run, say, an ADJ element hex in eight channel mode but how do you put it in eight channel mode and how do you actually set it to the specific DMX address that it needs to be at? When you patch in your fixtures, this is called patching, and it's the same thing on the iPad for the AJ uh, My DMX. You're gonna patch in all of your fixtures. Right here on the screen, you can see all of my fixtures patched in. We just patched in the third AJ InnoSpot Pro not too long ago. The number that you're gonna set your light to is the corresponding first number in its DMX channel sequence. So for the InnoSpot Pro that we just patched in, it'll be 241. For my Mega Hex PARs, I have channel 233 for one of them and 225 for another one. And then you can see all the variety of fixtures I have up here that have already been pre-programmed, such as these InnoSpot Pros, Martin Rust MH1s, we have rock boxes, the Wash FX 2s and Wash FX 1s. They are already pre-programmed into my Chave Show Express. They've already been patched in, and those are the numbers that correspond to them. So if I wanted to set up one of my Chave Wash FXs, I would need to put it on channel 313, 322, or 390, one of the two, one of the three. Now I will point out, in Chave Show Express, it tells you what channel mode to put these lights on as well. The Mega Hex Pars do not because I actually had to manually put those in because Chave Show Express did not have them already put in yet. Such as the Mega Par profiles up here, it's already telling me that it's on seven channel mode. Now let's go look at a light. Specifically, we'll look at the ADJ Mega Hex Par to show you how you put it on eight channel mode and how you set the DMX address. So this is my ADJ Mega Hex PAR and this is very similar to all ADJ menus out there. I'm gonna press menu until I get back to DMX. Now this is my channel select. So I, again, I have every channel from in the zero to 512 to select. The first channel for my ADJ Mega Hex PAR is 225. Now I'm gonna press setup to get to my channel mode. This is where I set the different channel modes. Again, we have six, seven, eight, 11 and 12. I want this set on eight channel mode. This is a big point here. If you don't have the correct channel mode set up for your light, it will not function properly. And that is all you need to do. Just set up your channel mode and you are set and ready to go. Now I'll mention it here, but I'll also mention it in the next video when we talk about programming, because this is more of a programming cheat and less of really like a patching fixtures, but it also is a way to save on DMX channels. You can run lights on the same channel. If I wanted to, I could run all of my ADJ Mega PARs, my Mega Hex PARs on the same DMX channel. They could all be on 225 and do the exact same thing. It's a way to save on DMX channels. You don't have to have an individual patched channel for all four lights. You can run them as the same to save on DMX channels and it also saves you in the programming phase on Chave Show Express as I will show you guys in the next video. And that is it guys for video number two. That is all of the tools you need to do DMX as well as how DMX works so you have a back end understanding of how DMXing is worked. Quick little recap, DMX programming is primarily done by either your phone, your iPad, or your computer. You then use boxes like the ADJ DMX Bridge that works with the ADJ DMX software on the iPad, or the Chave Show Express box, the 512 box, which uses Chave Show Express on the laptop, or the Sound Switch box, which again works with Sound Switch on the computer. There's other options out there as well. These boxes primarily all they're doing is transferring that computer signal to DMX signal so that it can send it out to your lights so your lights can read that signal. The way you get that signal from the box to the lights is multiple different ways. There are newer, fancier lights that have wireless DMX built into them as well as the boxes themselves like the ADJ DMX Bridge which have their proprietary Wi-Fi based 
wireless DMX built into them. If you don't have the fancy lights like that and you're just using PAR profiles like this, you can use wired DMX wiring, which is XLR DMX wiring, or you can buy wireless receivers and transmitters that also operate on Wi-Fi like the donor wireless DMX series. DMXing as a whole is broken up into different universes, and a universe is made up of 512 digital faders. These digital faders are like analog faders. You can buy an analog DMX controller like I mentioned earlier and control lights the same way without using a computer and a box. You would just plug straight into the analog controller and then you would have the 32, 16, or 8 channels of faders to use the flights. But like I said, it's a pain in the ass. So most of us use digital faders with digital DMX controller. And like represented here on the screen in Chavez Show Express, we could see all 512 of those digital channel faders. We then go in and we patch in all of our lights. All of our lights take up a certain number of channels in terms of the amount of control that we need. Once you patch in your fixture, you can look at all of the different channels that that light needs, such as right here we have the ADJ Mega Hex Par, which are behind me right there. If I raise my shutter and my master fader, I can then start seeing red, green, blue, white, all those fun colors right there with the digital faders. That is how DMXing works. More advanced fixtures such as the ADJ InnoSpot Pro movers behind me have a variety of channels like you can see here on the screen where they have 14 different channels which do a lot more stuff in terms of your X and Y pan and tilt of the light, your focus of your light, as well as your color wheel, your gobo wheel, the spinning, you can make your gobo spin, you can add a tri-prism. There's a lot more features in moving heads than simple DMXing with just a par light. When you're patching your lights into your DMX software, if the light does not exist itself, don't fret. You can always go to the user manual or Google the digital channels that that light specifically uses. It'll tell you what channel is used for red, what channel is used for green. It'll tell you specifically what each channel is used for for that light. Such as the mega hex part below, we have red is the first channel, green is the second channel, blue is the third channel. There's a bat. But other lights don't follow that same order, such as the InnoSpot Pro. The first channel is your X, the second channel is your uh, X Find, the third channel is your Y. That is why we patch lights in using the pre-made patches that are already built in the Shavi Show Express or ADJ. Or we look them up in the manuals themselves and I'll talk about in episode 3 how we add in a light manually. We also talked about how each light has different channel modes. So you have different channel modes that that light can operate on depending on how many features you need. Like I said, a lot of lights have additional channels that are pretty much useless that activate the built-in functions of that light. Therefore, you don't necessarily need them in DMXing, but you could also use them if you want. Once you've set up your light inside of your program software itself, you want to go to the light itself and set the DMX channel like I talked about earlier to the first channel that that light is assigned to. You also want to make sure it is set to the correct channel mode. And that guys, once again, is how DMXing works, how you set up your fixtures to be able to DMX. In the third video coming up next, I'm going to be talking specifically about Chave Show Express and how Chave Show Express works how you DMX lights in Chave Show Express and create different scenes and live functions. And again, I'll say it again, Chave Show Express is by far the easiest DMXing software to get into. It is way easier than the ADJ DMX Bridge and you guys will see that in the upcoming video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to slap a like on this video as well as leave it down in the comment section down below what other videos you would like me to get into after I finish the third video on how Shave Show Express works. We've already got some suggestions that I get into the ADJ DMX bridge, so more than likely the fourth video in this series is going to be specifically looking at the ADJ DMX bridge and how you control your lights via DMX using that platform versus Shave Show Express that I'm using now. One thing I did think about is doing a specific video on the donor wireless DMX to talk about how you set these up. It's very, very simple just to say it right now. If you guys would like to see a video on that or any other things that I you think I did not cover very well in this video or future topics for DMXing or just talking about lights in general, let me know down in the comment section down below. Without my Patreon supporters, guys, these videos would probably not happen. They are what allow me to be able to do this, especially pay my editor, Joe, that's editing this video right now to be able to allow me to focus on my business and just find time to film these videos 
He edits the videos. It makes my life a thousand times easier without him these videos would not be here. So thanks again to all the Patreon supporters. If you guys would like to also join the Patreon, link is down in the description down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hit that notification bell, hit the notification bell because that way you are notified the next time I provide you guys with an awesome video. And like always guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning guys. Merch down in the description down below. Peace.